this title. And he's going to go to the middle for and get something. And, and I'll tell you, honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Yes, everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another edition of The Warm Down Today. Delighted to be joined by Ingrid from TV2. Thank you for joining me. How are you doing? Very good, very good. Thank you for having me. No problem. Before <laughs> me and Ingrid get stuck into it, we are sponsored by the good folks at The Athletic, so thank you to those guys for giving us a quick little sponsorship. Now, this is the best coverage that you're going to get of Manchester United out there on the web. Uh, world-class team of writers, completely ad-free. If you want to know more about it, and you can get up to 50% off a yearly subscription, link is in the description. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on as we get into it as well. Uh, Ingrid, what's going on at United? Yeah, what we, is going are we, on? Are we sleepwalking into a crisis or what? Because it doesn't feel very good at the moment. I really don't hope so. For, for Ole's sake, uh, that he's sleeping war- sleepwalking into a crisis. But, you know, people are starting to bring up these numbers that only, like, three wins. Three and 15. Yeah, after the Paris game. That's and a bit closer to actually. Yeah. So, it's a lot of stuff going on. Let's put it like that. Uh, one of the articles that I was reading earlier uh, from Andy Mitten this weekend in The Athletic was talking about um, neither Rashford or Pogba should be taking the penalties, and actually he thinks Marshall should be. Do you think it was just that... I mean, what's your take on it? Because I, I was going to say, do you think it's a bit of a storm in a teacup? But I don't want to put words in your mouth. What's your take on it? Well, I think that we are discussing it because somebody missed the penalties. If they hadn't, nobody... It wouldn't even be a topic for us to sit here and speak about it. But personally, I think that... I think Marcus Rashford should do the penalties... Uh, just because he's a striker, he's got a good record. uh, And as a striker, you need to bag those goals. Um, But that said, Pogba is a very big player in all of the meanings of a big player. So he also needs to sort of be handled by Oli in a way. Um, And yeah, we can talk about how he's doing that. But for me personally... I think Rashford is the one that should be taking the penalties and he's got better record also than Pogba. Yeah, um, I thought Pogba was given the penalties. Or to me, at least, it, feel, it felt like Pogba was given the penalties last season in an attempt to pump up his reputation somewhat, or appease him somewhat. It was almost like we was letting him know how much we love him in a mad way. Um, when you've got forwards, the likes of Tony Marshall, the likes of Marcus Rashford, judged on goals... One of those could have been Golden Boot winner last year with the penalties that Pogba taken, which shows you just how many penalties we got. Uh, and it would have changed the perspective of that particular strike and whichever of the lads got it. Uh, what's your thoughts on what Andy said then? Five out of six scored, Tony Marshall. He, well, on Saturday when, when we got the penalty, he ran over to the ball and I was like, oh, maybe Tony's taking it. But he threw it straight to Rashford. Do you think he should be in the mix as well, maybe? Probably, yeah, he should be in the mix since he's now up there. And who do you really have to take the penalties for Man United now? Uh, I think you can count them pretty easy on one hand. So you should definitely uh, <laughs> should definitely keep sort of the options open uh, to it because um, he is going to need everyone he's got on top. We both know that Oli's always going to say that he's happy whether or not that's the actual truth behind closed doors or not. But do you think, with the way the squad is shaping up going into the rest of this season, we've just lost Lukaku, looks like we've now lost Sanchez, we've lost Ander Herrera, we arguably lost Fellaini in the last 12 months as well with him going in January. Do you think United have gone into this a little bit weak and a little bit thin, or do you think that Solskjaer's trying to replicate what Fergie did some, to some degree by bringing in a whole host of youngsters at the same time? It is definitely in the sort of United spirit, or what do you call it in England, to sort DNA. of the, the tradition, yeah, the DNA, to to bring in those youngsters and make them really good. And I can see that he's trying to implicate them now as well. Um, but you are one thing is that you're putting a lot of pressure on the youngsters to perform. Uh, a lot of them are going to be quite fearless and just be, I'm off for this, I can do this, and just bang on. Mm. But the thing that 
when you play young players, you are not sure what you're going to get. You're not sure to get that consistency because um, you can't you can't rely on that with young players naturally because they don't have the experience. Um, so there's sort of two sides. There are Oli who wants to bring them in and do it the United way, as he likes to say it. And the other side is being Manchester United. There is requirements and expectations of them to achieve big things, not in 10 years, but quite shortly. Today, today yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, does he have the time and will he have the time to do it the way he wants to do it? Or will the sort of demand of trophies and stuff catch up before he gets to develop this team? Which I think is it was the youngest, yeah. But well, both yeah. weekends, uh, both Premier League weekends, it was the youngest team yeah. to feature, uh, and it looks like it's going to have to go even younger now with Tony Marshall being out. Exactly, yeah. You would assume mm. that Mason Greenwood just steps straight into yeah. the firing line. But My then, who worry, does he have on the bench? Exactly. Like, My worry after that is, I. When I was doing my predicted 11 for the Palace game, those people demanding Mason starts. And I was like, no, I'd, I'd rather see Angel brought in and let's keep Mason on the bench. Because if we do start Mason, we have nothing. Certainly now with no Sanchez. Mm. Where's the impact? One matter, I love the guy, but let's be honest, he's never coming on an impact in a game. That, he's a guy that starts and plays well. He's not someone to change a tempo, Not certainly not speed it up at least. We don't have a Fellaini-style plan B. I worry for United now. I worry, looking at, we all sort of said, oh, one injury, and we're screwed. Now we got one injury. Yeah. If we get another injury. Then what are you going to do? <laughs> I like... really don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> no. Because there's the handful of academy players that everybody knows, your, your Greenwood, your Gomez, maybe your Chong, Jimmy Garner, players of that sort of level. We know they're good enough. We know that they could probably come in and, and do something. But below that, behind that, there's a big gap between the next lot if yeah. if they're good enough. And there's a big question mark over if... And I, I don't think some of them are. And I think that there are definitely big talents there in the names you just spoke of. Uh, but again, it's the consistency. You can't rely on it because mm. they don't have the experience. So it is a big gamble for Ole to do it. But I think that that it's in his DNA as well to try to do it something like that because that's the way he's been brought up in Manchester United. That's the way he wants the club to be. That's the way he wants to bring the club back. Um, but yeah, he is in a position that he's being very much evaluated from every match day, every, every game they play. And if the results don't come then, yeah, what's going to happen? Yeah, and, and I, I, I would like to think that the appointment of Oli was a signal from the, the owners and the management that this was a new project, starting the day Oli is appointed, and a project that's got three to five years to mature because you can't give Oli the tools that he's currently got and gone, you better go win the league, mate. You know, not only are we looking at a big four, which has grown into a big six, I think the likes of Wolves, Leicester, Everton, two of those could make it a big eight. And, you know, eight into four does not go uh, no. at all. <laughs> uh, some teams are going to have to start missing out. And I, I think you're very likely to see Chelsea, Arsenal, maybe ourselves, start giving up some ground to the likes of Everton and Wolves who've got less pressure on them. Yeah, definitely. And that's, I think that, yeah, Oli has to sort of look over his shoulder to pay attention not only in the top six, as you say, but the other one are catching up. And they are catching up into the sort of top six or top eight, as to say, while what I think that Man United fans are asking, why can't we sort of catch up to the top two, which are Liverpool and City at the moment, and what should they do to be there? Mm. But we don't know what sort of agreement that Oli has made with Woodward or the board in terms of his project. Maybe they have sort of an arrangement that you will have time to develop this. You, we need to get the young players up again and make this the way and the identity that United is supposed to be. And then if you don't get results in two, one, two, three, 
yes, that's fine as long as we rebuild this team because that's probably, in my opinion, what United should be doing. But at the same time, as I said, they are United. So you don't really know what's sort of going on there, but it's a tough balance to handle. Yeah, I think Jose fell foul of that one a little bit, whereas he was clearly brought in to bring in immediate success, which he didn't do. But he did bring in some success. You know, we went to a few yeah. cup finals. We won the Europa League and completed all our, our trophy cabinet. Uh, we won a League Cup. We were very unlucky against Chelsea in the FA Cup final. He came second. And then a few months later, he still loses his job. Um, I know that there was problems behind the scenes with Jose. I know that he'd spat his dummy out. And I, I know that it looked like there was a never-ending slope that we didn't seem that we was ever going to get back on with Jose. But if we can get rid of Jose and he brings in a, a couple of trophies, a few cup finals and comes second, we can get rid of Louis van Gaal the day he wins a trophy. What is the success barometer that the club are going to put yeah. on Oli? I, I, I worry because I think it definitely needs a long-term strategy to actually get this over the line and, and make this successful because I, I think we entered into an agreement that you all dance with the devil if you want to call it when you sign someone like Jose Mourinho and when you've entered into this cycle of almost what Chelsea have done, where they've just been in managers all the time, you can't build anything sustainable by doing that. And I would love it if uh, if Oli could build, build the next dynasty, you know, from Samat to Sir Alex to someone like Oli coming in. Obviously, he's already got the love of the fans. <laughs> this even fans are already sort of saying he ain't up to the task, but I think he's got to be given the tools to get up to the task the tools and the time. He says it himself in, in the press conferences all the time that this is no quick fix. So I don't know if he sort of speaks to the fans, uh, the board, who is speaking to, probably everyone, uh, that he needs time because United are now in a position where I felt like maybe Liverpool were uh, a couple of years ago where they really have to like sit down and like rebuild the whole thing fundamentally and up again and that's not done in a jiffy mm. it's it's going to take time but if he will yeah as you said with with uh, with Mourinho what kind of barometer are you working with here but it probably is different yeah Mourinho probably was measured against winners of league and that was probably the 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 start and end of his definition of success yeah whereas I think Oli could have something different I think if it's bring through, you know, it's probably not a number on it, but you know, start bringing through youngsters, start utilising the academy. Maybe it was to get rid of some of the bigger names. Maybe it was to get yeah. rid of, like, Sanchez and that off the wage bill and Lukaku off the wage bill and bring in yeah. some players and, and clear some. It feels a bit too planned for some of the, the wages that have left. Mm. So have all left in the same summer and not for, you know, I can't imagine, and I certainly hope it's not the case that, we're not just going to be like, nice one. I hope that there's a case that next summer there was some mega signings coming in. And that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean just mega money. It just means like a, a big outlay on somebody like a Jaden Sancho. Because he still fits mm. that mould for me of what I think United should be looking for. He's just going to have a big fat fee attached to him because of what he's been doing in Dortmund. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and how Oli is going to play that and how the club is going to play that is very very interesting uh, the things that we see now with yeah Lukaku and Sanchez probably uh, going um, not bringing in any sort of particular replacement forwards is it is it done intentionally uh, or it's got to be surely it has to be you would think so but then again if it's intentionally you would really think that yeah he's going to have some time to build it because I think you don't even have to like football to see that, <laughs> okay, if I'm going to build this team with a lot of young players as well, it's going to take time. It's mm. very easy mathematics to, yeah. So we'll see. Going back to what you said about Liverpool, um, I see a lot of that Liverpool style of play in both what he did at Mulder and also what he does. Uh, or he's trying to implement at United. I just don't think he's been quite as successful yet. I think one thing that you could say Klopp did was he got his identity over, first and foremost, 
and then they bought well. You know, they had the likes of Trent come through the academy, but they identified the likes of Robertson, Van Dijk, new goalkeeper, and they slowly begin to add to a team and improve that team. I think if Oli's allowed to do the same sort of thing, where he's, he's cleared out some of the decks, and you know, many more would argue there's a lot more players need to go, and I, I certainly wouldn't stand in the way of that. I think the way the likes of Smalling and Jones have been ghosted out of the team has been fantastic for the likes of Axel to come through and be that third choice. But I think if he's allowed to start identifying the needs now of the team, which he's done with wan and he's done with Maguire, I think everyone would agree. Yeah. We needed a centre-half, we needed a full-back. Yeah. If he's able to plug and improve those weak points, I think, yes, this is a project that you, know, you could, in three or four years, start to see United compete, especially as three or four years you would expect this Liverpool team to have passed its cycle and to be in the next rebuilding phase, arguably the same with Manchester City if they've not already started to do that. Yeah. You might see United sort of peaking at the right kind of time in a few years, but it is going to take years to get this right. Exactly. And normally you don't get very many years in United if you don't do well. We've seen that over the past. So, um, But definitely what Klopp has been doing, I'm sure it's very inspirational for for managers like like Oli. Not that he necessarily wants to be like Jurgen Klopp, but <laughs> but he uh, how he's doing it and how he I think one of the keys also for Jurgen Klopp is to make that unity uh in in the squad that is so strong in Liverpool right now. It's like all of those boys are playing for each other and for the badge mm. and for the club and for the fans. They are just so compact in that unity. While that's something I feel like United don't have at the moment. Um and I think it's also very clear that Ole is trying to bring that back with the "We Are United" mantras and and a bit of that Fergie touch, because um, that's that's something United is gonna need. And right now, it doesn't seem like it's all there, but the way that Klopp has implemented that into the Liverpool team is brilliant. And yeah. It has given success, <laughs> but it took time. It wasn't done in a, in a season, <sighs> but yeah, he needs time. He does need time. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're right on the, the unity and, and the team spirit side of things. I think that's been a massive part of why Liverpool have been relatively successful recently. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know I, it probably hurts you very much. Oh, uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, especially when our main rivals are the, the two at the top of the league at the moment. One's European champions, one's British, yeah, yeah. English yeah. champions. It's not, it's not good, is it? Yeah, it fucking no. sucks. <laughs> um, I think that I could say that it seems like, at least on the face of things, um, City just look too good. You know, Jose said it. I think everyone's thinking it. Their B team would be quite successful in the Premier League. They are ridiculously good. Um, <laughs> so I think you, you're going to struggle. To, the depth that they've got is outrageous. Yeah. I don't think Liverpool have anything like that depth. But what they do have is they have this very, very, very defined style of play yeah. and belief in themselves. Um, which, I mean, they're on a right streak at the moment. Makes me want to throw up. But um, it's real. You have to. Yeah. You have to admit it. it is real. Yeah. And I think that's something that. Oli could bring to United. I think that you look at what Leicester did, that belief exactly. and, a, and a very identified yeah. style of play. You can be outrageously successful with a smaller side and then you can build on that success and create a bit more of a, a dynastic side like I think is what City have managed to go and achieve with uh, the depth that they've created. Tony Marshall, for me, was someone that, well, I think it was quite clear Jose wanted to shut the guy and I think he wanted yeah. out of United quite badly as well. Ollie coming in, signed his new deal. You spoke to him, was it last week? Last week, yeah. What's he got to say for himself? He, is, he, is he happy? Uh, well, he, well, you can't really tell about him because he's always has this very, he's got a face that's a bit hard to read. But yes, he, from what I could tell from this um, French guy, because I don't speak French, so I had to like... And his English ain't great, is it? I think he, he, he understood very well what I was asking in English. But um, I think that he's just more comfortable in speaking in his own language. It probably easier for him to express himself in the right words and 
Yeah. Yeah, because a so, misquote, so yeah, the wrong yeah, word, a misquote. Exactly. It's front page news, isn't it? It is. So to avoid that, I think it's more... So you do it through a translator? Yeah. But uh, he was, from what I could tell, he was very, very happy with getting that number nine shirt again. Uh, not the 11, moving from the wing into more center striker. Uh, he was really happy about that. And he said that, I asked him if, was there sort of a discussion between you and Oli about it, um, whether or not you should go for that arrangement. And he said, um, no, I just, well, Lukaku got a got an injury in the summer and then I was sort of <laughs> play, play there. Fucking did it. <laughs> uh, and Oli really liked what I did in training and then we did in in the matches as well and it has sort of worked really good and then it became sort of natural for me to to have that position again which is what he started off with mm. but since um other players came in Slatan and Lukaku he sort of they pushed him aside both maybe like in more ways than just physically mm. uh, but now he's sort of back and he said that um, yeah, it's uh, it's Oli's decision and it's the right decision to put him in the number nine role again. So I think that he's really happy with it. And I also think that um, he he, ne- he has never said that he doesn't like playing on the wing, but I think he feels that being more centre is his best position, sort of. From, think, yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, well... He got qualities which are good for both positions, but it. Uh, I think ultimately it comes down to feeling um, that you sort of have earned your way into a role, and especially if he thinks that this is where I play the best, then in your if your mindset is in is on that, that's sort of naturally where you will get the best out of yourself. I think. Um, so for him to play there, it's just a shame that he got that injury now. But hopefully it's not out for that long bar. No, I think it's at around about a month he's looking at. Yeah. So obviously bad timing for that one. But I think he is he and he and Rashford is, is gonna link up quite well there. I think they they sort of how do you say it in English, like fill out sort of Mesh. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember the like English word, but they complement each other. Yeah, complement. Yeah, I think he's got a very good point in terms of obviously he, he was someone that Lou brought in. Uh, same with Marcus. Mourinho arrives and he brings Latans. Latans playing down the middle. That's that. No yeah. one else is getting a look in. Marcus got a little bit of a look in once Latan was injured towards the back end of that season. Played as a striker. Um, Tony was shoved out wide for that. Then he brings in Lukaku shoved back out wide again and then you bring in Sanchez who you know considering how much he was on I think it was one point trillion a week or something like um, whatever mm. he was on yeah. he, he's got a play as well so I think both the lads Marcus and Tony Marshall have both suffered because of the, the signings that Jose had made and I think both mm. lads probably have earned the right to have a regular starting spot in the same place week in week out I think it'd be really interesting this week to see what Ollie does whether he puts um, Mason down the middle. Yeah. I don't think he will. I think he'll probably put Marcus down the middle and he'll move James maybe to the left and, and Mason to one of the other sides. Do um, you think it's too soon for Mason or do you think he's uh, got the ability or the, the attitude? Well, uh, I think you probably know him better than I do. Um, but from what I've seen of him, he is this young, very, very talented and skilled boy. Uh, who seems to be very, yeah, fearless. And I think that he, if he was given the chance, he would, like, take it with both hands uh, and play brilliantly. But it's when you sort of meet an obstacle or it doesn't work for you, and then you have to feel that, yeah, you have to feel on how it is to play in the Premier League in Manchester United with all of those pressure that comes along so I think uh, as long as he's doing good it's going to be good but you don't know how sort of he will react until you see how he is when things are not going great for him 
Um, so I don't know how he's going to react to that. I don't know if you have any inputs on how you have like seen him through the... Not really seen him deal with adversity, to be honest, because he's just been a level above every level he's played at, and I'd almost include what we saw in pre-season out of the guy. It's really Um, good there, yeah. The the cameos that he's had in the league this year, not really enough to judge. He's not really had any ball, he's not really had any time on the ball. He got a shot off against Chelsea, but it's not really enough time to see what he can do. Mm. The first time I saw him, he was 13, and I was, I'll have to keep the person I was with nameless but uh, <laughs> they sort of had a little bet and gone let's see how long it is before he notices and I went who's number seven <laughs> about five minutes into the game and they started laughing and I'm like what are you laughing at and like, <laughs> we'd actually just said wonder how long it's going to be before you notice him he was playing under 15s for United under yeah. 15s at 13 and he was four or five levels above I think later that season he moved into the 16s and then I think he started making the bench for the 18s um not too long after, I think it was the following season. He's just got this glide about him. He's fast, but doesn't look like he's trying very hard. Mm. He's he's, li- he's literally both footed, which is one of the weirdest things to have. Like, he took the penalty the other day with his wrong foot. Yeah, He's buried top corner free kicks <laughs> with his wrong foot. The little laugh that he did to Oli as he came back from taking that penalty, I think Oli had said to him, don't you dare take this with your wrong foot. And he's took it, buried it, and come back like, ha, <laughs> told you. <laughs> this he's is a kid that I... Yeah, he's, yeah. he's got chewed. He's got confidence. I think he just wants to play football. Um, I've heard some stories where it's it's not quite the most savory thing, where he wasn't happy to travel with the first team because mm. it meant that he wasn't going to play for the 18s. And on one hand, you go, is that him getting a little bit big for his boots saying I ain't playing? Or is that him saying, I just want to play football? Yeah. I can't make my mind up on that. But I think you, can see it you almost way. have to have some level of arrogance. This is a kid that would have seen Zlatan at United. If Zlatan's rubbed off on him at all, if like it can't be a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. If you've got the ability to back it up. Otherwise, it's weird, isn't it? Imagine having the Zlatan talk, but being like Emil Heskey, it doesn't really work. That wouldn't be good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, as you say, I can really see him being a big success in United and I really think that Oli there's nothing he would like more than to see guys like him succeed yeah someone he debuted yeah, yeah. that I would see. be like perfect um, and, but also like as you say he, you got to have that sort of weird crazy confidence if you're going to be like top top notch I know he was pissed off he didn't score against Cardiff like yeah. really pissed off yeah. that he hadn't scored but if if you know the greatest players of all times all have a very twisted mind that is nothing like us ordinary people walking around on this earth you have to have something very sort of crazy ass thing in your brain to be on that level uh and when he has the skills to back it as well that is interesting Imagine what Zlatan would have been like <laughs> as a 17-year-old. Obviously, none of us really remember. There wasn't social media, so he never got any of the clips or interviews or anything like that. Yeah. I can imagine 17-year-old Zlatan <laughs> just being like Zlatan is now, yeah. but younger. He's just always been like that, yeah. I think. Yeah. And I wonder if the, there is something like that in Mason where he's pissed off if he doesn't score. Yeah. And he'd rather just not travel with the first things. It doesn't impress him, I don't think. <laughs> he'd rather just go, I'd rather play. Yeah. You know, is that something that he'd rather have? I don't know. We don't know. But definitely it's going to be exciting to see where his sort of roads leads to because he got so much good going on for him. So it's just about making that potential shine. Yeah, I think we've got a real gem in our hands. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up there, but Ingrid, thank you yeah. for joining me. Um, thank you so much for make having Make sure me. I go and give her a follow. Do you want to give yourself a little <laughs> shout out where you can find you? Uh, I don't do Twitter, but Instagram is my page. Ingrid... Which everybody I will can put stamp. it in the description <laughs> for you so you can find it. Um, it's probably a good move not doing Twitter. Uh, <laughs> right, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we will be back with another warm down with a, a TBC guest, um, but it will be a good one. Um, so come and check that out. Make sure to subscribe. And before we go, uh, you can come and get 50% off with The Athletic using my link in the description below. Uh, so you can get it for £2.50 a month for a year. 
after a little free trial if you want to go and check it out it is the new home of football writing link is in the description that's the athletic.co.uk uh, forward slash house and you can get 50% off if you're interested in any of that thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one laters